Thank you so much, Hormaz, for that. Let's now focus on Tata Steel. The company reported a mixed set of Q1 numbers. Our colleague spoke to TV Narendran, the CEO and Managing Director of the company, and began by asking him about the global steel pricing. Let's listen in to that conversation. The Chinese prices have been a concern for the last year or so, ever since uh, uh, China started exporting almost uh, 8 to 10 million tons a month. And I think uh, that level of exports continues. Uh, China prices are depressed, but as you mentioned, at these levels, it's not sustainable. Chinese steel companies are already losing money. I think they're losing about 40 to $50 per ton on the HR coil at these prices. So uh, it has to start moving up. And coking coal is not moving down uh, as much as it should if steel prices have to stay at these levels. So I do expect that we are pretty close to the bottom. All right, so that's heartening to hear. Let's focus on business then, and let's take the positive side of the business first, the India operations. Fairly steady, a bit up a ton, more or less in line with what uh, you know the street was working with. Give us a few details. You have Kalinga Nagar, that's going to be commissioned in the next couple of months. What is the total volume growth you're looking at for the India business for this year? Because there'll be contribution that'll be coming in from there. And also, given that there is some softness in coking coal prices, what is the outlook on the EBITDA per ton? Yeah. So as far as volumes are concerned, the guidance we have given uh, for the year is about 1.7 million tons coming out of Kalinganagar. We have another 200,000 tons coming out of Nilachal. Uh, for India, that's 1.9. But we are taking out half a million tons because we have a blast furnace, uh, G blast furnace in Jamshedpur going for relining. So the net volume increase that we have guided is 1.4 million tons uh, for India. As far as coking coal prices are concerned, uh, like I said, it's stickier than... It should be at today's steel prices. It's still around 220 odd dollars uh, because the liquidity in the coking coal market is not as great as it is in iron ore. So you typically see iron ore prices reflecting steel prices better than coking coal prices reflecting steel prices. And that's what we're seeing even today. Okay. And what about for the past quarter, coking coal prices, uh, how much lower were they in quarter one if I compare it to quarter four? And for quarter two, how much lower will they be? Uh, so I think for Q2, compared to Q1, we are guiding that in India it will be about uh, $25, uh, 20 to $25 per ton lower. Uh, and I think last uh, Q1 compared to Q4 was about $15 lower. Yeah. Got it. Consumption. I'm talking of consumption cost. Got it. Okay. All right. Uh, fair enough. So that's about the India PS. What about Europe? The good news was the losses were lower because Netherlands has turned around. But UK is going for the entire realignment. So keeping that in mind, do you see Europe actually move into the green or do you think UK operations will continue to drag? And what about Netherlands? It only improves from year on? So uh, as you know, the Netherlands uh, business suffered last year because of the blast furnace relining. The blast furnace came back on stream in February. So we've had a, uh, the first quarter of uh, full production after a long time. You know, so uh, that's why you see the volumes pick up in Netherlands. The markets are not great in Europe, so the spreads have been a bit lower than we had uh, thought. But overall, uh, obviously, Netherlands has moved from negative to positive. We expect Netherlands to stay positive EBITDA for the next few quarters at least and beyond. Uh, but Q2, of course, will be challenging for everyone because uh, we are seeing at, we are at the lowest point in steel prices the way we see it. UK, as you know, is uh, going through major restructuring. We had uh, guided that Q1 and Q2 will be significant EBITDA loss, which is what it is. But by the end of September, we would have closed the remaining blast furnace. We've already closed the coke ovens in one blast furnace. And uh, that will put uh, UK into a neutral or a slightly positive operating EBITDA territory. But there would be, of course, one-off losses as we do the restructuring and we do the VRS and things like that. Okay, so for the second half of the year, Europe is definitely going to be in the green, as of current reckoning. Definitely better than the first half, I will put it that way. And uh, because there will be some one-offs, like I said. But on an operating basis, it will be in the green. Yeah. Got it. And what about India? India is doing around 13,700. Give and take everything. Pricing, benefit of this, uh, you know, $20 of coking coal cost. A bit up a ton improves? No, there will be some compression because uh, steel prices are still soft. Uh, coking coal prices, uh, we will absorb. We will get some of the benefits. So there will be some compression. But uh, again, uh, I look at Q2 as being the low point of the year. And uh, hopefully Q3 and Q4, things will look better because we'll also have additional volumes coming in from Kalinganagar. All right, let's focus on the balance sheet then. The net debt has moved up to around 82,000 crores because you've incurred around 3,800 crores of CAPEX. With the CAPEX that have lined up, I think it's around 16,000 crores. How do you see this debt number move in an absolute basis 
or and and where do you think it peaks out if you could give us an absolute number on the debt yeah you know so a uh, lot of the movement just now is because of working capital uh, when you always compare march to june most companies will show an increase because of working capital because uh, you're typically hitting the lowest point in the year by the end of march so there's a bit of working capital adjustment second adjustment is because uh, as we shut the blast furnaces in the uk uh, we are shipping out slabs and coils from netherlands and india uh, to the uk to keep the downstream businesses running so there's a little bit of working capital going there but overall what we guided for the year is the net debt uh, will be flattish but the net debt to ebitda will come to below 2.5 it was over 3 and it will come down to below 2.5 okay all right net debt to ebitda to sub 2.5 got it uh, let's also focus on this crucial supreme court verdict now you all have gone ahead mr narendran and put a contingent liability of close to 17000 crores if in case there's an adverse scenario that plays out and this is on a retrospective basis so we'll have to wait by for uh, you know for uh, that judgment but could you tell us if it is implied on a prospective basis what could be the hit on an annual basis you know the contingent liability is something that uh, has been on our uh, books for the last many many years so every year if you look at the annual report it has always been carried so it's not anything fresh i think we thought uh, it was good practice for us to be transparent about that but having said that the impact is far more than tata steel and i think uh, the impact is on uh, power cost because coal prices will go up it impact is on iron ore impact is on bauxite so there is a larger impact across economy and uh, that's a larger concern uh, on an ongoing basis that uh, what in the past the state had planned to tax i think the impact would be about 1500 crores a year but uh, you know honestly we are waiting for more clarity on the uh, you know the ask acts as well because the laws were not notified in some of the states too and uh, so there's a lot of work uh, which still needs to be done before we get to some specific numbers mm do you think uh, the probability of this getting enforced is low i don't want to comment it's up to judges so we'll wait uh, to see about the uh, outcome from the supreme court is all right you know the other beat that i track is cement a lot of consolidation is taking place out there over here you have uh, you know the top four players that hold bulk of the market share but there are a couple of assets that that could come out one is mr agarwal's asset the other one is nmdc steel and rinl as well in the past you've said that you want to focus more on organic growth but if these assets come up is star steel interested now preference is always for uh, organic growth because uh, we have the land now uh, between kalinganagar uh, nilachal and uh, the bhushan plant uh, we can add at least another 20 million tons so we have enough land available to grow significantly with the existing assets and you grow in the same spot you help competitiveness as well because you spread your fixed cost over larger volume uh, so that's our preference so i don't think uh, uh, you know we look at all the options but uh, as of now our preference is always for organic growth all right that's the word coming in from tara steel's management with that we'll step into a break when we